hero. From the Department of Theatre, Film, Television and Interactive Media, Luma is back in the studio at the University of York, live. Welcome to the Luma opening ceremony. I'm your host, Lewis Dixon. Tonight, we'll be kicking off the Luma Film Festival as we build up to the amazing gala selection screening this weekend. We've got full access to this year's entries as well as exclusive interviews with a selection of this year's gala's film directors and cinematographers. It's going to be an exciting show and an even more exciting weekend. So if you've been unable to join us this year, then we've got you covered. Now, due to COVID, Luma has not been live or in person since 2019. That's three years of Luma being online or not live at all. So we've decided to mix things up. We've changed a traditional Luma Live into the opening ceremony for the entire weekend. So before we deep dive into this year's entries, let's take a look back at Luma in previous years and their highlights. culmination often of a very hard year where you've had ups and downs and it's a reminder of just how fantastic this department is and how important the students are to it. It's so great to be back and live once more and most importantly to be able to screen your films in TFTI's very own Holbeck Cinema. So which films will, be, will we be seeing this weekend on the big screen? Let's take a look at some of this year's entries. Don't work tonight. Sorry? Do not work. After dark, you understand me? Just don't. Tell me you won't. Say it. What? Do not work tonight! Oh, it's you again? He's a friend. No friend. From way back. Tony Rogers. You had me worried. I've been trying to phone you. Stop lying! Don't take me for a fool! I'm really lucky to be in touch with our local priest, Titus. Titus has agreed to take me on a pre-priest education journey. They like Catholicism too. It's okay, it's just a five minute walk. Well, that's this year's top five films, which you can watch tomorrow night at Luma's Gala screening. The judges had a tough job this year with 20 entries to choose from. So congratulations to No Place Like Home, Late Night Delivery, Preach Modern, It's Just a Five Minute Walk and The Window Between Us. So before we meet the talented individuals behind each of these projects, we have a short message from our amazing Luma Festival director, Oliver Davis. Hello, my name's Ollie, and welcome back to Luma. So Luma was set up as an opportunity to celebrate the work of aspiring young filmmakers with workshops, masterclasses, talks, and lots of screenings. This year we have seen no shortage of fantastic filmmaking, and we cannot wait to share all these with you. So what's happening this weekend? On Saturday 18th, we will be screening our third year film and television production group projects. We will also be screening every film that was submitted to the festival from first, second and third year film and television production 
as well as some postgraduate filmmaking. We will also be hosting various virtual talks, such as writer and director Mark Jenkin, production designer Sam Lysenko, and director Carl Hunter. Saturday we'll also see a video essay showcase hosted by our very own Nick Jones. But to cap off the first day of Luma 2022, we will be hosting our own gala screening. So what's happening on Sunday 19th? We will be screening the same films that were on rotation on the Saturday, as well as various in-person talks, such as the future of public service broadcasting with our own Ed Brayman and Mark Helsby, as well as other talks with um, gaffer James Bridger and producer Jack Tarling. And to cap off Sunday, we will be announcing our gala results from the Saturday night. The results will see the awarding of the Luma Audience Award and the Arillo Award. So for more detail on our schedule, you can have a look at our website, lumafilmfestival.co.uk, or you can have a look at our Instagram, at lumafilmfest. So this year we've been very fortunate because we have received so much support from Arillo, who sponsor the event every year, as well as Ufund. Thanks very much for listening. See you later. So this year we have a fantastic lineup, including a variety of genres from mockumentary to thriller. First up is Late Night Delivery, an 80s inspired werewolf horror film which pays homage to classics like An American Werewolf in London whilst providing a social commentary on the theme of work exploitation, which can be found at the story's core. So, who are the brains behind this project? Well, I'm joined by the cinematographer of this exciting film, John Gilbert, and its fantastic editor, editor Harry Cole. Thank you so much, guys, for taking time out to join us. No problem. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Um, now, before we discuss this incredible project, let's take a sneak peek at this action-packed film. How did he get here? Like that he crossed Don't work tonight. Sorry? Do not work. After dark, you understand me? Work. Do not work tonight! Finish the seven anyway! Sam, what are we doing here? I thought we had a good deal. We do. I risked a lot getting you into the country. Now go do your job. You're not local. What do you think? I only came here because this party promised free booze. What are you still doing here? I'm not tipping you. Wow, doesn't that look? Absolutely incredible. Thank you so much to John and Harry for joining me today uh, to talk about your film. Welcome guys, welcome to Thank my uh, chill and mingle zone as it were. <laughs> now we've just seen this incredible uh, VT of what uh, audiences can see tomorrow at the big event. Now there's so much going on. We've got action, <laughs> we've got you know different genres, loads of different layers, different influences. So my main question to you guys is where the hell did you guys start once you had got this script? Yeah, I mean, it was obviously a very uh, ambitious project mm. when, when we first heard about the idea, and, and I think the horror genre is often underestimated, but as you say, it's got so many different technical elements, yeah. but a lot of that was in the script that we got, mm. even in the first draft that we saw from Hallam de Cruz, it was so well yeah. described, and I think he really understands the genre and yeah. knew his influences, and didn't want to just play it up for laughs, he was very oh, yeah. serious about... Yeah. Uh, committing to the genre and trying to be as, as scary as we can. I think that's the beauty of what you guys have captured there because it does have comedy yes. involved. Like it is, well, certainly when I watched it, I was like, this is actually really funny. So it's got that mix again. But John, let's go over to you. So obviously as cinematographer, mm -hmm. congratulations by the way, it's a big role. Um, where did you start? Because, you know, you've got 80s horror. How do you sort of not make that look like cheesy you know like how, what did you do to bring that to life i mean i don't think we were really ever worried about it not being cheesy okay. because but um as as you said it, it's taken inspiration from a, an american werewolf in london yeah. parts and they're even dead references anyway but it's um 
Yeah, as as from a script perspective, I was looking. I was like, there's a lot of locations. I've yeah. got to do scouting on each one. You know, it's just get an idea of every set and cool. how I can light each one. And that was my key. Uh, and I noticed focus, I guess, in production. I remember you saying about colour that played a massive part in it, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, we would. As any class, you know, you look at even Dead Two and stuff like yeah. that. There's so much red, and we were like, "Well, let's let's have his outfit red, his cars red, yeah. for example." And then in our big finale party scene, it, we just drench red. it in just yeah. red, and it was like, "Yeah." And then I think in, in post, especially, we we never realised how red we were going to go. No. Yeah. And then it was it was actually during post production that the the Batman came out, Matt Reeves' Batman came out, and you messaged me. You said, "There's a there's a party sequence." It's strobe lighting, it's red, <laughs> yeah, it was it's our film. So we actually pulled up, pulled up stills from that film and we were looking at them on the waveform monitor and we actually matched it exactly, didn't we? Oh, yeah, amazing. Just, uh, yeah. So obviously, dead quickly, Harry, so editing, how was that? Because I think you had over or just under 200 slates. Yeah. So was, when you got that on your desk. about that. I mean, it helped that I was on set and we, we could yeah. see what, was, uh, what rushes we were getting. Okay. But yeah, it was quite a project. It really was. And that was sort of the fun of it as well. I liked that we could cover such a, a, a vast landscape but then it came to the horror elements and and John had given me so many different options and so many different ways yeah. to work with the scene so we had a lot of fun experimenting there and mm. saying okay how can we really get in our lead character's head and and how can we create the scariest experience oh, possible we had the opposite though because we had shots that we had to cut and yeah. I'd just say you know um, good stuff Amazing, literally guys well done well we cannot wait to watch it because it absolutely looks incredible I've seen it once seen it twice Absolutely phenomenal. So we'll see you tomorrow at the screen. And thank you, thank you so much to you too no uh, for joining us to talk about your incredible film. Next up, it's just a five minute walk, an experimental film which reflects on the experiences of 14 autistic women. Produced, directed and performed by Laura Alvarez, this film is to illustrate her own and other experiences of autism. Let's take a look. Encore une bonne journée de merde Comme une journée de confinement Comme une journée... Okay, it's just a five minute walk. Now, unfortunately, Laura is unable to join us to talk about this incredible project, but she has sent in a video to tell us more. Let's take a look. And I am the director of It's Just a Five Minute Walk. So I made this experimental film for my third year dissertation project uh, where I explore the representation of autistic meltdown on screen. So my idea was to ask women on the spectrum how they felt during an autistic meltdown, which sometimes they called a sensory overload or a panic attack or shutdown, and discuss with them um, how they felt, what they hear, what they smell, uh, what triggers a meltdown for them, places that are difficult um, and we together we kind of created a scene where a young autistic woman uh, has a meltdown so for a lot of them it started it starts with um, a difficult social conversation a social environment something that didn't go as planned or as well and then the fact of overthinking it and being in an environment where they are over sensory um, input kind of triggers um, the reaction. Um, so it was an important project for me because I was diagnosed very recently and it was a way for me to learn well, more about autism, question a bit what I knew of it because of media and see that it's actually quite easy to have more accurate representation. You just need to ask the people directly concerned by, by it. 
and for this project it was a way for me to incorporate the testimonies of the women but also show my experience as an autistic woman and how I sometimes feel coming back from uni after a stressful day um, where going home is just a five minute walk but it ends up being a more a much more like difficult um, experience um, and it's it's very important because it's a, I want this experimental film to be only one um, it's only one representation of what is a meltdown it's different for everyone but it's so easy to just ask the people and explore this both in a more realistic way but also in an artistic way um, so I hope it will inspire other women, other directors, other, other artists to just explore autism in a different way than what we know already. Thank you so much to Laura for sending in her interview. It has been so inspiring to see representation of her experiences and other women's experiences of this hidden disability. Next up is a film very close to my heart. I directed it. Let's take a look at The Window Between Us. Tony Rogers. He's a friend, an old friend from way back. To oh. Tony Rogers. Famous Tony? <laughs> yes, I've heard a lot about you. You were good friends. Oh, well, maybe you're enemies. <laughs> it's all right, Tony. Julia doesn't know the truth. In my life, I always thought I was doing the right thing. You know, it's funny the things they say I'm hands you want. The wife, the car, the kids. But that's not what I wanted. Us is a story about two past lovers who unexpectedly meet again after 30 years, but find they have ran out of time. As the director of the film, I am also joined tonight by Daniel Whittingham, the film's cine cinematographer, to discuss how we made this tear jerky film. Good morning, Dan. Hello. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, we've just watched a little preview on it. All are very excited. First of all, obviously as a cinematographer, what is the choice behind the four by three ratio? For those at home, why does it look like a square? Um, so there were a lot of eyebrows that were raised by this decision. Mm -hmm. um, and for a moment I questioned whether I stood by it. But there are so many reasons to do it. I think firstly we're filming in kind of tight spaces yeah. um, and very little exterior. And I wanted to kind of condense um, the world of the film into the kind of shape of these rooms uh -huh. we were in. Um, there was also this idea of the Polaroid, which is um, a kind of theme throughout the film and condensing into a box this, this film kind of, I think, mimicked this, this Polaroid look. Um, and finally, there's the windows, the window between us. And I wanted to mimic the shape of the window. The of windows course. aren't long, of they're course. just, you know, squares. Yeah. So that was no, that decision. That's absolutely incredible. But, um, so you talked about sort of, um, you know, so this hospital sort of atmosphere. Um, obviously, in the middle or just coming out of this pandemic, you can't obviously shoot in an actual hospital. So I presume, well, I know it was <laughs> absolutely hard work getting this sort of hospital brought to life. So how did we go about doing that? Um, so it was really a team effort um, yeah. because there were lots of props, there was hospital gear, you need to decorate the rooms. It wasn't clear in the script whether or not, until quite late, whether or not it was a hospital or a hospice. Yeah. Uh, and so we're kind of standing by that. Of course, we have um, drafts, yeah. And obviously we can't shoot in a hospital because there was still kind of a pandemic yep. ongoing. Yep. Um, and so we had to, you know, turn this office into a room. Um, and I think it. I think we really pulled it off. And of course, you've also the thing about sort of our film is, <laughs> is that sort of emotional element, that emotional undertone. So yeah. obviously, as a cinematographer, the stuff that you've done in the past, how differently was it coming to this project and going, okay, we need to sort of. Did you think we need to change our ways, or how did you approach it? Um, I think the story was very strong. 
Okay. And so the script really did a lot of the work, and the okay. actors, and the directing, of course. <laughs> I know. Um, but um, so I, I felt I was really working on aesthetic and telling the story, but I didn't feel I was having to compensate for a weak script or anything. Okay. It was really just capturing that story in a, in a simple way. Now, obviously, again, like, keep touching on the pandemic that threw everything up in the air. So once you had got the script and the location, especially the confined space that we were working, was there a point where you thought, oh God, we're not going to be able to do this? Um, I think there was doubt throughout. Yeah. Um, as it was a third year project, the department was kind of the boss on this one. Yeah. Um, but I think there was enough goodwill and we reduced the risk when we could and we made it work. Oh, I, th thank I think. You. <laughs> now, before you go, in one word, just one word, Dan, what can those at home, those watching, our one viewer, what can our one viewer expect to see tomorrow in one word? Um, a journey. That was two. But thank journey. you very much, Daniel, for joining me and talking about the window between us. Now, for the final film of the night. Preach Modern, a mockumentary which follows young Damien who wants to become a priest, despite knowing very little about religion and Catholicism in particular. Let's take a look. When has God called me? Oh, um, that, that one time at my mum's uh, tea party. Uh, one of her friends, well, let's say she didn't just fancy the scones. Uh, anyway, my, uh, my saviour went off and um, I managed to get away. I can't actually remember who called me, but come to think of it, yes. I'm, I'm almost certain it was God. Oh, Damien. Oh, Damien is an exceptional student of our Heavenly Father. Uh, not a lot of young people are like Damien. They're not as interested in the, the art of religion as he is. However, Damien does seem to be quite popular among his young friends. I myself was always thought of as rather odd, rather out of place for wanting to, to join the priesthood at such a young age. joined on the sofa by Lily Jensetter, the film's director, to get an inside look at how the film was made and the inspiration behind the story. Welcome, Lily. Good morning. Hi. Welcome. Um, now, I thought we'd just watch. Obviously, it's absolutely incredible. I Thank love you. the mockumentary. <laughs> but out of the five films that are in the gala, mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, the mockumentary style is the most sort of informal. So, sort of, where did this idea, this great big idea, come from in the first place? So that's a very good question, but I'm also a bit embarrassed to answer it because okay. it comes from this informality basically because okay. it was a second year uni project yeah. and it was our it was personally my first short film of course, yeah. so I was a bit scared I was like yeah. what genre can help me in case something goes wrong and I was like yeah mockumentary because yeah. I was a bit like <laughs> this shot didn't work but it can work in post. shot no problem it yeah and obviously this idea of the priest as well we were talking this earlier where did yeah. that come from so basically quite plainly said it's coming from Fleabag I yeah. watched a lot of Fleabag <laughs> I was thinking about the phenomenon of the hot priest yeah. I was like why does this guy get so much attention yeah. and then this idea formed in my head that I could make something like this with my main character Damien yeah and that he would get a lot of attention purely by being a priest oh and mm. obviously for those who don't know it's already it was Nick Jones or a lecturer who played the role of the piece is absolutely magnificent. I was like, literally when I watched it, I was like, this is absolutely hysterical. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, uh, on my cheeky auto cue, it says that you directed the film, but um, you also did more than that, didn't you? You didn't only direct, you produced, mm -hmm. wrote, and edited this mm -hmm. whole film. And mm -hmm. it got into God, so that is, deserves a round of applause mm -hmm. on its own. <laughs> no one else is clapping. Um, <laughs> but what my question is, Lily, is how did you take up this momentous task because you're not just doing one thing like you know I directed Window mm -hmm. you did all four five of those tasks so mm -hmm. was there a point where you thought oh god what like how is this gonna happen I mean it is it is quite overwhelming I was yeah. very nervous before the project started because you have this whole 
project, like the whole pre-production is happening, mm -hmm. and then you have three days of shooting. Of and uh, be before those days, I was terrified. Yeah. But once it started, it was so much fun. I had a brilliant crew, yeah. and I also have to give credit to all the other second years because they did the exact same thing. Yeah, because they all had to do produce, direct, and edit. It literally, because mm -hmm. obviously COVID, we didn't get a chance to do ours, but it was mm -hmm. and. I keep saying, but the fact that obviously it's gone all this way for the judges, mm -hmm. like judges' houses, they exact like, but to the gala is <laughs> incredible. <laughs> is that now I can see on our desk that you have brought along yeah. a prop from the set. You want to take mm -hmm. us through that, Lily? What is it? What is this little special? Uh, what is it? Yeah, okay, yeah. It? Basically, <laughs> it's like the idea is a bit silly, so I wanted to have silly props, and yeah. it's basically religious merch, and yeah. it has a joke on it. It says, "How does Jesus make his tea?" Can we get that? Who's on that camera for? Take a look at this. Just this yeah. camera over here, Lily. He brews it. He brews it. What a joke, really. right? <laughs> <laughs> mm. well, so pause. Just there, uh, meet the crickets in the studio. <laughs> um, no, it's absolutely incredible. Um, now, you. obviously, for those who haven't seen it, in a few words, what can we expect tomorrow? Um, chaos, religion, and a lot of laughter, hopefully. Oh, I mm. love it. Well, Lily, thank you so thank much you. for coming in. Literally, I can't say this is one of my favourite films. <laughs> thank you so, so much. Good thank luck you. tomorrow. Good luck for everyone. I can't wait to see <laughs> you there. Well, thank you, Lily, uh, for coming in tonight. It has been great talking with you. So I'm afraid that is all we have got time for this evening. Special thanks to all our guests for coming on the show, the incredible crew both on the floor and inside the gallery, as well as to the whole Luma team making this weekend happen and for putting such incredible an incredible weekend of events on for us. I've been Lewis Dixon and thank you so much for tuning in to Luma 2022's opening ceremony. Thanks for watching and good night.